Welcome back friends. I quickly want to announce two things before the video begins. First, I want to thank all of you who have purchased merchandise. It really does support the channel and our mission to shine a light on cold cases. And if you've had your eye on any of the cameo designs, including the original, Wendigo, and Jackalope, they will only be available through November 1st. Then they are going back into the vault, so to speak, until the next subscriber milestone, which looking at current numbers may not be until mid-2019. Um, I know it's kind of grinchy to take them away before the holidays, but I figured it would be especially grinchy to lock them away before my favorite month and holiday of Halloween. So November 1st is the last day you have to purchase cameo designs for quite a while. Uh, the merch shop will be in the description as always, and thank you in advance should you decide to pick something up link again in the description. Thank you for listening thus far, but now it's time to get into what matters. We're nearly half a century away from 1972, from Watergate, the Pioneer 10 space probe launch, and from the discovery of a still unidentified young man. In May of 1972, John Doe's body was found in a pond in Volusia County, Florida. His death was ruled a homicide, and 46 years later, he and his killer remain nameless. Sunday, May 7th, 1972, Volusia County, Florida. Two motorcyclists turn off of Indian Lake Road to a more secluded, forested area surrounding a pond. Nearby are several beer cans and a bike. Though Volusia County Juvenile Home isn't far, the duo doesn't expect to see a young man in the water. A moment passes and the motorcyclists notice the young man isn't moving is only half-clothed, and upon closer inspection, he appears to be in the late stages of decomposition. They immediately contact the Volusia County Sheriff's Office, the encounter violently shifting the peaceful Sunday into a grim afternoon. Local news outlets detail Sheriff Ed Duff's account. The nameless victim appeared between 15 and 30 years old and was deceased for some time before his discovery. Volusia County couldn't immediately pinpoint a day or cause of death and would have to wait for the autopsy report. Monday, May 8th, 1972. Dr. Arthur Schwartz, the Volusia County medical examiner, is tasked with performing the autopsy on John Doe. This is what he found. John Doe was a white male, approximately 5 feet 2 inches tall, and weighing 120 pounds. He had dark brown, medium-length, wavy hair, and all 32 of his teeth were nearly flawless, even with no fillings. His pubic area was recently shaved. There were no distinguishing marks or scars on his skin, but Schwartz identified a benign bone tumor in his right leg, commonly found in male children, and the bones in his feet were fused together. Both conditions are typically asymptomatic. He may not have been aware that he even had them. Doe's clothing combination stood out. He wore a red and white striped, short-sleeved knit shirt and a blue denim jacket. Authorities found him unclothed from the waist down with a pair of purple and gray tweed pants hanging from one leg. On his feet were brown dress socks and a single black eight and a half size loafer with a silver buckle. In the back left pocket of his pants, police found a black leather wallet, splattered with blue and green paint flecks containing $6.17 and no identification. But the most alarming data from the autopsy was Doe's age and cause of death. 
Authorities spent decades under the belief that Doe was between 15 to 30 years old, but after an exhumation in 2013, it is now believed Doe was 11 to 14 years old, an adolescent. The medical examiner estimated he died four days prior to discovery on May 3rd, 1972, and his demise wasn't accidental. There were seven stab wounds in total, three to the chest, three to the left leg, and one to the abdomen. Authorities at Volusia County now know they're dealing with a homicide investigation. Reports on the exact location of the body conflict. Some claim Doe was near the pond, while a majority of sources state Doe was discovered in the pond. There was no sign of a struggle or blood at the scene. The beer cans found nearby didn't offer much insight, but the bicycle, a 10-speed green Schwinn, posed a point of interest at first. On May 3rd, John Doe's estimated date of death, the bike was reported stolen from a home in New Smyrna Beach, approximately 26 miles from Doe's body. Later reports suggested authorities ruled out a connection between the stolen bike and the murder of John Doe. Something that has escaped detectives' reach, though, is the murder weapon. It's never been found. However, they believe it to be a pocket-sized knife. Volusia County sent Doe's information to all nearby law enforcement agencies and even invoked the help of the FBI. The Federal Bureau of Investigation fingerprinted John Doe despite the decomposition but had no matches in their systems. In fact, all law enforcement agencies came up empty. A handful of individuals viewed Doe's body in an attempt to identify him, but nobody could put a name to the face. Authorities buried John Doe on May 22nd, 1972. The initial county grave in Cedar Hill Cemetery was unmarked, but now has a headstone reading, John Doe died 1972. Five weeks into the investigation, the Volusia County Sheriff's Office still had strong leads, but by two and a half months in, those leads had dried up. Decades passed without any progress, and Doe faded from the public eye until November 13th, 2013, the day of his exhumation. After a judge's approval, authorities reached out to the C.A. Pound Human Identification Laboratory at the University of Florida, the director, Dr. Michael Warren, several of his graduate students, and staff from the medical examiner's office to perform the exhumation. The hope was to execute several tests, DNA, isotope, and CT scans, to aid in identifying Doe and, eventually, identifying his killer. The exhumation was careful and meticulous. A local funeral home employee commented that it looked more like an archaeological dig. The strontium and lead isotope test results showed Doe was likely born within the United States. The CT scans were sent to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to aid in facial reconstructions. Unfortunately, the DNA extraction was unsuccessful. According to the Doe Network, the samples were insufficient for DNA profiling. So, John Doe continues to go unclaimed by family or friends, and law enforcement's theories behind the killer's possible motive doesn't bring any comfort. Because there were no signs of foul play or violence where Doe was found, authorities worked under the theory the boy's assailant or assailants killed him elsewhere and left his remains at the pond. Due to the state of undress and his shaved pubic region, former Sheriff Ed Duff speculated the horrific act of violence was sexually motivated. However, no publicly known information can confirm this. By the state of decomposition, the lack of leads, and failed DNA extraction, we may never know John Doe's true identity. Forty years ago, Sheriff Ed Duff told the press, We have a murder case on our hands, and right now we need to identify the body so we can start working on leads to find the murderer. At the time of this upload, we have no names, no suspects, and no new leads. With how thin the case file is after four decades, it seems only a miracle could bring John Doe home. 
That miracle will likely come in the form of a witness, someone who knew the victim or the killer, saw what happened, or heard a confession. John Doe was 11 to 14 years old. He was a white male standing at 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighing 120 pounds, and had dark brown, wavy, medium-length hair. His eye color is not known. His 32 teeth were all in near-perfect condition and no fillings were observed, and he had no visible scars or tattoos. He had a benign bone tumor in his right leg and a congenital condition where bones in the feet fuse together. However, both conditions are asymptomatic. When he was found, his pubic area had been shaved. Based on isotope testing, it is believed he was born in the United States. If you have any information on the identity or circumstances of the Volusia County John Doe, please contact the Volusia County Sheriff's Office at 386-254-4689 or the Volusia County Medical Examiner's Office at 386-258-4060. A special thank you to the Patreon family. The names you see on screen are just some of the lovely people who financially contribute to this channel. Whether they are passionate about cases like the Volusia County John Doe's or the other dark content on this channel, their support cannot be overstated. If you are interested in supporting the channel, information is in the description, but even if you only continue to support by watching, thank you. Thank you for giving the Volusia County John Doe a moment of your time, and no matter what you choose to speculate or believe, I ask you only for respect in the comments below, and though we only know the tragic ending to John Doe's story, he deserves to reclaim his true name and deserves justice for his murder. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to pick up your Cameo merch by November 1st, and thank you for supporting the channel's mission to bring exposure to cold cases. Stay safe, friends, and have a good night.